The Weekly Warm Pipe. <laughs> oh, look, we have a special guest this week. <laughs> Why is this mask not intimidating? It looks like I'm wearing a dinner plate on my face. It's so wide. Those are like, those are the weird ones that they like the cheap Jason mask that does it. It should have more holes in it for one to be like a regular mask. Well, here's the other thing, and I'll take it off so you can hear me. Back in the 80s, did they not make those things a little, like, with a little bit harder plastic? They seem so thin and so cheap and so terrible now. I mean, a lot of times, those ones I've seen, like you said, are literally like a pancake. Like, it's flat. There's no curvature to it. It's either that plastic one or even, like, a like a different type of material, foam or... or Something like that, where it's like so cheaply made. I don't know if it's a copyright issue or what, but like those ones don't have the right holes in it. There should be other holes like down the side and this and that. So I, I mean, don't know. I, I mean, I got to say, I think I paid like two, two, maybe three dollars max for that mask so that, you know, they're at least not charging you full price for the crappy quality. But I just remember as a kid, they were so much sturdier and a little thicker. They didn't look so stupid anyway. Everything was better in the eighties. So, that's <laughs> I mean, you're story. you're you're the hockey guy, right, Chase? Uh, for for the podcast, right? You know more hockey than me. That's right. Were those masks ever used in hockey? I don't know. Like the Jason yeah. masks, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, they were used in the seventies. Um, uh, you can Google search old masks from the seventies, and I would actually wear that for street hockey. Um, because it would at least give your nose some kind of protection, I would imagine, and maybe keep you from getting cut. Um, is it the greatest protection? No, but it's better than having a puck hit you straight in the face. Gotcha, gotcha. But yeah, they used to use them back in the day. But that's not what we're talking about today, is it, Russ? <laughs> Sorry, I was going to transition for you, but it looks like you're looking this up real quick, so we'll go with it. Well, yeah, I was going to show the if you guys are watching on YouTube, I was going to show you the... Uh... I looked up seventies hockey mask. There's a really cool one that where he did where he did like scars all over it. Oh, right here. Yeah. Scariest goalie mask. The, that one's pretty good. I like the Panther one at the top there. That one was pretty cool. Oh wow, yeah. Um But this are... one seemed like obviously this one yeah. looks like the Jason mask right yep. there. The Philadelphia Flyers one over there on the left. Bottom oh, right left. Ne- right next yeah, to it. Like, that one's pretty cool. So okay, I guess there is some some root to it in there with yeah Jason wearing that there. Yep. Fair enough. <laughs> so they were it was minimal protection, but they did you know did what they something. Did. That's right. But with with that, you know, it's kind of kind of on topic. We wanted to talk about in this podcast kind of the early horror or scary movies that we remember. Maybe the first one, or maybe the first couple. Um, that we can recall seeing them, maybe where we're seeing them. And we could, you know, bounce around to some other films we like as well, watching during the Halloween season. And of course, we reached out to you guys to see what your first horror movie was. And we do have two uh, voicemails we can get to as well. If you guys like to call into the show and leave your voicemail, we'll play it on air. That phone number is 949 682 Nine two seven seven nine four nine six eight two warp. Leave us a voicemail. Two voicemails. How exciting! Exciting. <laughs> um, watching horror movies for me, I will say, growing up in the eighties, uh, my parents were divorced, so usually I would go with my dad on the weekends, which entailed us going to the video rental store where I would probably get a Nintendo game and my dad would get a horror movie usually. So we would go back and I would stay in his room. He was living um, with, with his sister, I believe. And so we only had one room in the house. So I'd have a little section set up for my Nintendo with TV and this and that. And then on his TV, he'd be playing the horror uh, movies. Sometimes he'd fall asleep. So then I would see kind of what's on screen right there was it appropriate for my age probably not but i think a lot of <laughs> us growing up in the 80s watched plenty of r-rated whether horror movies action movies or wh- what have you yeah at a young age it's funny because just yesterday my son went to our neighbor's house 
uh, they were going to watch Beetlejuice. And I was, cons- I was, I was wondering if my friend was going to like turn the volume down because there's, there's, ah, yes. So there's a swear word in there. Three, nice freaking model. And yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, grabs his crotch, honk, honk, all that stuff. And so I was wondering if my buddy Nick was going to turn that down. And basically they just said, Hey, there's going to be a couple bad words in this. You're going to hear them just, but we don't repeat them. So <laughs> they didn't turn it down, which is a little surprising to me. I don't know if they just didn't know when it was coming. I think I would have known. I would have probably hit mute real quick. Right. Cause in my car, when I listen to blink, I turn down the volume real quick when I know a bad word's coming up. So they don't have to hear it. But, um, anyway but yes as as kids of the 80s we were exposed to that stuff and just parents just kind of said eh you know like you're gonna hear it but don't repeat it which is kind of what my friend nick said so. <laughs> yeah i said like, like you explaining maybe he didn't know the movie beetlejuice as much yeah. uh to know when to shut it off so it's like all right unless he had a copy of it when it was on tv you know when sometimes these movies are flipping through the, the cable channels and you're like, oh, Beetlejuice is on in there. Like, right. oh, like, they cut all these scenes out or like whatever horror movie, you like barely get to see it. Yeah, that was kind of my, that was kind of my, a lot of my horror movies were like watching them on USA or TNT or whatever it was back in the day. And it was like edited down, you know, to be less gory and bloody. Right. Yeah. Sometimes cutting out some of the, uh, some of the stuff there. Um, I made I made a very short list of some of the ones that stood out to me trying to remember like the very first horror movie. It's a little bit difficult. I remember scenes from certain ones. Right. This one stood out the most. Maybe you guys remember it. And I had to talk to a few people um, in prior years. I'm like, do you remember this movie here? And I have yet to rewatch it. So maybe this October I will try to. Uh, check that out but i remember a scene of it let's see i'm gonna try to bring up let's see is that the uh, yeah yeah my my commentary on this is going to be all over the place for us so so this came out in 1988 nice the name of it is called uh night of the demons Ooh, i don't know if i've ever seen that um let's see if that's pretty horrifying yeah that that cover is pretty yeah pretty sweet, I, right? i'm not a fan of that i don't <laughs> like anything to do with demons because i believe demons are real so not a fan of that face so the main thing i remember in this <laughs> I, I probably can't even play the trailer we'll get demonetized or something but i remember it, a scene in this for every reason again this is the 80s dad fell asleep i'm watching this in is a cheerleader scene who I think like the cheerleader turns into a demon or something like that. And she's like coming on to one of the guys and she does get topless. Oh, wow. And she, she has lipstick or something. And she's like putting some lipstick on and then she takes the lipstick and puts it into her boob and it like disappears into there or whatever. That is... and you're like, what is this effect? And I was just so like, <laughs> that <laughs> like that so just stood out. Strange. Yeah. Like, like what director is like, or, you know, writer is writing. I think she's going to put the lipstick on and then she's going to smush it into her boob and it's right, just going right. to disappear. Like, oh, okay, that's a little out there. <laughs> so let's read the, uh, the synopsis here, storyline or whatever. It says, uh, on the night of Halloween, 10 teens decide to go to a party at an abandoned funeral parlor. Whole house, H U L L, whole house, rumored to be built on an evil patch of land. An underground stream is the place. Not While to be st- confused with full house. Right. <laughs> While starting the party, the teens gather around a big mirror to perform a seance. Big mistake. They awaken some evil force and find themselves trapped and taken over one by one. Now it's a battle for who can survive and cross over the stream before going to hell oh taglines put your party face on i'm gonna start <laughs> saying that everywhere i go Jeez. so oh did you see the pac-man reference no there's a pac-man reference yes i just i fast. saw it as you were scrolling right hold on you you're going too fast. Oh, too fast throw up a little bit oh our our oh yeah 
in the convenience store, the repeated sounds from the arcade machine are actually from the Atari 26 home version of Pac-Man. There you go. That's pretty cool. Fun so there fact. We go. So maybe check this out. Night of the Demons. I, it's got a uh, 6 out of 10 rating here on IMDb. I will not be watching that. <laughs> I can already tell by the cover. I don't like by the it. cover. It's, it's no good. It's too much for me. I'm very young and impressionable, Russ. I can't watch things like that. <laughs> Give you nightmares. Um, I'm just going to kind of be all over the place because I can't specifically think of the first thing I saw. Um, I'm tempted. I'm tempted to lead off with this one movie. I, I wouldn't even call this a horror movie, but just a scary movie. And I've I've brought it up several times in the past. It's not going to be a surprise to anybody who is a regular listener of this podcast, but Cat's Eye. Cat's Eye is the first scary movie that I can really remember creeping me out. And I've told the story before, but there's a scene where the troll comes out of the wall, climbs up the bed, crawls across a young Drew Barrymore, pinches her nose and starts sucking the life out of her. And that creeped me out. And I actually have a black cat to this day that looks like cats I cat his name's shadow but i love cats because they keep me protected from all the evil trolls out there trying to hide in my walls <laughs> but i that that movie it's not that's i wouldn't call it a horror movie because there's no real blood but just that stupid little troll just creeped me out like i was more afraid of like mythical creatures as a kid like an alien a troll bigfoot you yeah know, stuff like that i wasn't okay. really yeah. So I remember seeing this at my aunt's house and just like that was like all I could think about for days. And it was uh, written by Stephen King. Yeah. You guys didn't know. And it's, a, it's kind of a two part of the movie. The first part, I, th- I feel like it's like this guy that's going to jump off a building and somehow the cat saves him. I don't really remember the first part. All I remember is the troll part. The troll part was super weird to me as a young child. Yeah, it does say the first two are adaptations of short stories in King's 1978 Night Shift collection. Yeah. The three stories are connected by the presence of a traveling cat. Yeah. Okay. Cat's yeah. eye. Cat's eye. Give it there a watch. You go. <laughs> go, go check out at least the third part. Right. Another movie that definitely frightened me, and I have watched this recently. Um, within the past couple years, did it still frighten you? Not as much. I mean, I guess I just, you know, being young and impressionable, impressionable, and the the special effects, I guess, were pretty good in it. And just seeing some certain scenes, um, that movie is uh, Pumpkinhead. Ooh, never seen it. Yeah, it's pretty. Uh, let's see. You could see even the um. What is it here? The poster. That's what I'm trying to say. It looks kind of creepy. I don't like that fingernail on the head of that child. Right. So he's like, obviously he has the head of a pumpkin Ugh. and these like long fingernails and Ugh. he's kind of scrawny looking. It might show it in the trailer here. I hope it's I hope next it shows to him. It. But like he was so grotesque and like scary that it just frightened me. Like, you know, I might have looked at, at this TV screen when he was on screen and was like, oh, my God, like it just got so scared. There's the deeper, like, nope. Jeepers Creepers truck. Right. Yeah. One of those creepy trucks there. Oh, it says that after a tragic accident, a man conjures up a towering vengeful demon called Pumpkinhead to destroy a group of unsuspecting teenagers. I think the teenagers like are driving and like kill his daughter or something. Oh. Like that. And then so he's seeking revenge. So, he yeah, gets- I don't blame him. It's the pumpkin. And there was, I think, a few of these that came out. So I, I like all the animal scenes. So, oh, that that was a quick back. Like, you could see his, like... He's, like, skeletal almost. Skeletal, right. That's, like, his bones and stuff. So that that's definitely, like, freaked me out. And I hope we get you know, to this, see him. Who is this witch-looking witch thing? Ah, she's, like, a witch lady. Witch you kind of saw him there. Yeah. Well, very interesting. I mean, I could probably look up a, a still shot of. The, yeah, let's see a still shot of this pumpkin head creature. Oh, he looks kind of like Predator. Are those things, those xenomorph looking things from. Yeah, like so that. Ninja you know, Turtles. 
Because the back of it, yeah, it does look like this the pizza monsters from Ninja yeah. Turtles. He has the back of his head is is larger, I guess, to make it more pumpkin ish shape. Doesn't yeah, look like a pumpkin at all. Yeah, and he's not even orange. I don't know. Ah, interesting. Okay, well, but super creepy. There's some good, uh, you know, good artwork here. For <laughs> there there it, he is but... hanging out with the director, you know, on the off scenes. <laughs> right. Hey, pumpkin head, get over here and get a headshot with me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but super creepy creep me out yeah and i had picked it up recently and checked it out and it was all right it's a good watch it didn't scare me as much interesting okay uh like i said i'm gonna be all over the place i'm just anything i can possibly think of i'm gonna bring it up so back in the day after church on sundays a lot of times there would be like a sunday afternoon movie like on nbc abc fox whatever it was well, I remember one specific Sunday, there was uh, Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. And I thought that was really cool, actually. I really enjoyed it. It was like a classic movie. Uh, it may have even been black and white. I can't remember if it was color or not. But um, basically, like this town is overrun by like these crows. And um, I don't remember a whole lot about the movie itself, except the birds being around. But um, kind of a, a neat old movie that i was it was one of those situations like in 2024 i probably wouldn't have watched it but because i was 1989 1990 whatever the year was and i was bored and it was a saturday afternoon uh or sunday afternoon i i didn't have anything else to do so i just watched it and it was kind of interesting Mm -hmm. i remember there being one scene where i think somebody's in a phone booth maybe Um, yeah yeah i think i do remember that but uh yeah I, i don't know i feel like it's a it's a. It was a decent movie. I remember enjoying it. I know I haven't seen it since then, so who knows what I would think about it today. But yeah, um, pretty cool. Nineteen sixty three. So by the time I saw it, this movie was like twenty five years old. Probably, you know, it was probably like the very late eighties or early ish nineties. And it was what probably on. You said on TV. Oh yeah, it was just on TV on a Sunday afternoon, and we yeah. didn't have cable. So right. Oh, okay. it was just on a regular TV. It was like on. It was like the Sunday afternoon movie. It was probably, my mm-hmm. guess is probably it was in like in October when it, they probably were playing some spookier movies. Right. So, but yeah, the birds. I just remember seeing it as a kid and being not really that scared of it, but intrigued by it. Yeah. I mean, seeing it when it came out based up against other movies and stuff that could certainly be frightening and, and scary. Yeah. Where then seeing it so much later, you're like, all right, obviously I've seen more better special effects and storylines and this and that. So, but, but it, it was, it, it was probably a really good movie for the time. 1963. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, so. does it have, I'm sure it has some, you know, facts on here on the Wikipedia page here. Film stars, Rod Taylor and Tippy Hedren in her screen debut. Um, while initially received mixed reviews when it originally released, its reputation improved over time and has since been considered to be one of the greatest horror films of all time. There you go. 2016, The Birds was deemed culturally historical or aesthetically significant by the United States Library of Congress and selected for preservation in its National Film Registry. Yeah. Do yourself a favor and watch this national treasure. I mean, anything with Alfred Hitchcock, definitely. Yeah. For spooky season. That's yep. a given, right? I think so. Um, This one I watched this year, actually, a few months back. My buddy Aldo was, uh, I think he posted something on Facebook and tagged me and my friend uh, Liana in it. And <laughs> we went we ended up going to his swap meet algo and then he brought us a copy each of this movie and that movie is fire in the sky Ooh, yeah i watched that in the last couple of years too so if you don't know this movie it's about alien abduction and certainly uh creepy for sure 1993 this movie uh, came out, and the, the quick synopsis is an Arizona logger mysteriously disappears for five days in an alleged encounter with a flying saucer in 1975. His co-workers endure ridicule 
and contempt as they are wrongfully accused of the murder. So they're up in the woods doing some logging and then they go to leave. There's like a bright light and he ends up getting taken. The guys take off and then they find him a few days later. And throughout the movie, you get these glimpses Mm -hmm. of him on the ship. You don't get to see everything that happened, but it's quick, like scenes like this. He's getting dragged. He's he's like quick shots of the aliens. He's like an operating table. But then finally, you get the full scene with that, where it's like this fabric or material that's stretched over his whole body. And he's like trying to break out and like, scream and it's just over his mouth and everything right. just looks so terrible and of course it's based on a true story so you're like oh my god yeah terrifying so it has its moments it's like slow at, you know f- starts off boom abduction and then it's just kind of a slow burn like i said yep. but certainly you know a lot of these alien movies abduction and then you're like based on a true story your mind starts kind of going crazy with it. You're like, what if I'm in the woods late at night? So it could be aliens. Well, here's the thing. Aliens can beam right into your house for us. There's no stopping them. <laughs> they could get you right out of your car. It driving. doesn't matter where you are. That's what they did to, uh, the, what, what I can't think of his name. The, the African American man that was married to the white woman that were traveling North of Canada. I don't know his name, but I remember seeing a, a video on it on TV and he's like, they were doing like this, uh, where they, where they make you, fall asleep and they what is it called um like hi- hypnosis. hypnosis yeah hypnosis and he's like he's wearing a hat what is he is he a captain and i was like that's so weird you can see through the ufo window and see that the alien's wearing a hat and he calls him captain that's weird that's weird i think his name's henry something okay henry the guy who was abducted anyway all right the next movie we're going to talk about uh also i wouldn't consider this a horror movie but for a long time, I was concerned that these creatures lived on the opposite side of side of my full size bed at night, and they and I would sleep all the way on my side on the far left of my bed, closest to my door as I could possibly get when I lived in North Carolina, <laughs> because I didn't want the gremlins to get me, Russ. You know as long I mean? as you don't feed them chicken. Oh, I guess that's a a mogwai if you don't feed them. Yeah, chicken. I didn't have any mogwais. <laughs> they were already gremlins. <laughs> They're already gremlins. But uh it's funny yeah, because gremlins I re- freaked you out okay gremlins freaked me out i did not like the i did not like how their skin looked slimy i did not like those eggs they came out of um yeah i didn't like i thought spike was super creepy and he was really uh a little mischievous you know but it's funny because it scared me so bad as a kid but later on i was looking through some of my brother's vhs tapes that he had recorded when he lived in New york city from HBO and one of the ones I found was Gremlins and I remember I was like all right I got to face my fear and I got to watch Gremlins. Mm-hmm. So I remember watching this and, and like I was I was much older I was like 17 18 19 20 years old I was like a young adult and uh and I was like this is what I was scared of as a kid this is hilarious <laughs> like this is so funny like especially the part where the lady like hops on that little chairlift and it shoots out the roof I think that's like yeah, the funniest yeah, yeah. part in the whole movie. But um no, but now I love Gremlins. Uh, yeah, and Gremlins one and two even. But um, it's one of my favorite holiday movies even because it's around Christmas time. But right. um, yes, yeah, definitely. But as a kid, yeah, as a, a Christmas movie, nineteen eighty five, eighty six, however old I was, five six years old, uh, terrified me. Interesting. I'm okay. Pretty sure they were sleeping under my bed, tickling <laughs> my feet at night with their <laughs> creepy clothes. Um, that made me kind of think of a. Another movie here. As you can see, my version of horror is so tame. He's afraid of trolls gremlins. and gremlins. Gremlins. <laughs> Not people hacking people's body parts off. Um, like I said, my dad would grab a lot of these movies from the rental store. Yeah. And seeing the uh the box art covers, you know, I would end up seeing them too because we're getting uh, you know, renting them, bringing them up to the shelf or whatever and kind of stand out. And I'm like, okay. And this one definitely freaked me out, definitely because of the the cover. I had to check under the toilet every time I had to go. Oh, I already know where you're going. You know what, Russ? I know you so well. (laughs) I knew you were going before you even gave that clue. (laughs) We're talking about ghoulies. Yeah. (laughs) That would be a nightmare. Have one of those things come up in the toilet. 
I haven't seen this in quite some time. I'd have to go back to it. It's probably hilarious now. Yeah, like there's a few other, uh, you know, I'll bring up on the list, but it's kind of like the same. I wouldn't say, I mean, it's a scary movie, but like, I don't know, like this type of, I guess, because they're all from the 80s. Right. You know, kind of goofy. 1984. You got the, it says tagline here, they'll get you in the end. Yeah. A I love that. I like that one, the furry one. I didn't like the slime. Oh, yeah, yeah. The slimy one is more gross, I guess. Actually, no, he looks pretty gross. Actually, I'm surprised this didn't scare the crap out of me as a kid, because he remind me of this that troll. Right, well, I horrifying. feel like this is more scary than the gremlins to me, I guess. Oh, I never saw this as a kid. Just the just the cover enough and the uh, passing through the you know the video store. But similar, similar plots to all these movies. A young man and his girlfriend move into an old mansion home where he becomes possessed by a desire to control Ooh. ancient demons. Definitely a freaky one popping yeah. out of the toilet. I don't know who got that idea, but definitely a good one. There's some That's creepy photos, weird. I guess, from the. <laughs> That's definitely terrifying. Yeah, there's a good one of the creature there. That yeah, last, think, that last picture reminds me of like a James Roll film. Oh, like that. Yeah. <laughs> All the candles yeah. and just the white face. Yeah. I feel like in the '80s there were so many of these horror movies that all the creatures were small. Like, yeah. Right. The Gremlins were tiny size. You got Chucky. He's small. Ghoulies. A whole bunch of different series for sure. It's like yeah. With Pumpkinhead, at least he was, you know, larger than life. <laughs> right. Yeah. Let's see. The next one I'm going to talk about is a scary movie made for TV. Uh, also, I wouldn't even consider this horror, but things that scared me as a kid didn't scare anybody else. I don't actually know that this scared me, but I just remember seeing it because they put it on TV. Tremors. Oh, okay. You know, the big sandworms that uh, came out of the ground and attacked the... Uh, was it Kevin Bacon? Kevin Bacon, yeah. And, uh, Kevin Bacon and who else was in this? Uh, let's see. It says Fred Ward and Finn Carter. 1990 Tremors. Yeah. You know, like it wasn't too scary. It was like in a desert setting, but it was just kind of neat. Kind of a neat little sci fi movie. Right. Instead of having this dark lit, scary movie. Right. It was like daytime most of the daytime, time. Daytime, desert. Out. The threat was you know, stay off the ground because they can hear you walking on it. So you got to stay above. Yep. Like on, it's like the floor is lava. Basically. That's right. <laughs> Somebody saw the sandworm from uh Beetlejuice and thought, Hey, we can do a whole movie about that. Right. Right. So, definitely a fun one. Tremors for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's more of a lighthearted fun. Not too creepy. Once again, my, uh, Level for creepiness has to be minimal. <laughs> um, let's see. We could probably we're about thirty minutes in. We could probably see what people were saying. Do you want to do phone calls first, voicemails, or uh, like there's some phone calls? Those are fun. Yeah. All right, we got two of them. We'll just go back to back with them and see what they had to say here. I keep dreaming, dreaming about my dream phone. <laughs> it's for you. All right, boys, it's Riff and Ricky here. Ricky, Ricky, what was the first scary movie you remember seeing? The Exorcist, I was probably like four. Oh, oh God. Probably way too young to be watching. Way too young. Did you enjoy it, or were you scared of it? Oh, you dude, I couldn't sleep for a while. Because I, I, all, all I can think of is a demon to this girl. Reagan. <laughs> yeah, Reagan. Yeah. I could, I could Horrifying. It was, dude, it, my, my, my household was full of scary movies. My Because I grew up with a bunch of uncles. So it was that, Freddy Krueger's, Jason's, mm -hmm. all that kind of good stuff. My, my first, I think, was Amityville Horror. And I know it was Amityville Horror. And I don't oh, think it scared me. Okay. I think it just got me excited about horror. And from there, That's I have Amityville Horror. <laughs> it's weirdo. Older. Uh, I was older. My parents were real parents. For <laughs> no. <laughs> ever, since then, ever since then, I've killed people and murdered people. And I have bodies in my basement. <laughs> I don't doubt it. I think that was it. I think it just got off. Confirmed. <laughs> Riff's a murderer. So Riff and Ricky from Pixel Game Squad jumping in. Thanks for the call, guys. Appreciate it. Pretty that. awesome. Yeah, Exorcist for sure. That's that's a scary one. 
Yeah, I would not watch The Exorcist. Once again, things with demons, mm-hmm. uh, I, I think that demon possessions probably really do happen at times. I'm not trying to have a part of that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and of course, uh, the, the classics he's mentioned, you know, Freddy and Jason staples for growing up in the 80s. Oh, yeah. There's there so many of them. So was, you were bound to see one of them, right? <laughs> yeah. And and uh, and I'll comment real quick on Freddy and Jason. Uh, for some reason, I found Jason much more tolerable than Freddy. I did not like Freddy's burnt face and I did not like the knives on his on his hands. And I didn't like all the psychological stuff in the dreams. Mm -hmm. Um, Jason's more like, you know, grotesque face, but I'm going to cover it up with a hockey mask or at least a bag. And I'm just going to chase you down with an axe. It's a little less scary. Right. Well, I too feel like with, with the Jason, you're like, Hey, as long as I don't go camping or to crystal Lake, I should be fine. Where Freddie is like, if I go to sleep, he can get you in your dreams. So that's kind of more vulnerable. I do remember being at my cousin Tabitha's house in Mississippi and we were in a room watching like TNT late at night and it was like a Jason marathon. And it was like the first, it was like the first or second one, whatever the scene is where at the very end you see the, the, is it the guy on the boat or the girl on the boat? I can't remember. It's been girl on the boat, the girl on the boat. And you think the movie's (laughs) over and it's a peaceful ending. (laughs) house and he pops out of the water. I remember that scared the crap out of me, Mm -hmm. but it was, it wasn't like the scared, like, that's terrifying. It was the scared, like it just surprised me. It's kind of yes. scared. And I immediately started dying laughing. And I thought it was the funniest way to end that movie ever because it was so unexpected for me. I forget with the I think that wasn't the original ending or was like, the second. It was the first movie. Oh, that was uh, the first? Yes. And I believe there was some story on it. I don't I don't want to say it wrong. I was trying to remember if the guy backing the movie who was like funding it i think like the ending where it just she's on the boat and this and that but the guy directing was like oh we should do this type thing do you think it was to kind of like leave leave uh the door open for a part two right that could have been something to where the like you know last minute like oh well let's leave it open end it to where maybe if we want to do more sequels right we could because technically spoilers if you haven't watched this freaking movie jason's not in the first friday the 13th right except right. that scene technically because yeah. he's boy jason right. coming out um uh, so they i did get like a hockey mask that's signed by that guy oh that's cool and i think also i think that guy also has a band that came locally that's like named like jason something like it's supposed to be like a you know similar to like a misfits or afi like a horror theme punk band cool i was like oh okay and then la- lastly uh riff did bring up amityville horror which yeah. was amityville um long island is where the house is so the house is terrifying looking yeah it's just those those, those windows, windows. And like shutters on it. It just yeah. looks like a face, like a very good f- feature of it. And, you know, of course, I've seen quite a few. They did like the original and a remake. And would you live in that house, Russ? Uh, the price is right, right? Price of market's crazy right now, right? There you go. You're like, hey, you want to throw it at me for 50K? Maybe so. Right, right. So definitely a fun one. Uh, we got one more voicemail as well. Hey, guys. This retro card collector here. The first Season horror two. movie that kind of stands out to me. I don't remember the first horror movie I ever saw, but the first one that really stands out to me is going to be Frighteners with Michael J. Fox. Ooh. That's one that I didn't really know was a horror movie when I first started watching it at like 15. I thought it was just going to be a fun Michael J. Fox movie. And then about halfway through, I realized, no, this is a little on the horror side. I think it was really cool. I like what they did with that one. And I felt like it was kind of a departure from Michael J. Fox for the roles we'd seen him in before. Honestly, I think it's a really cool movie. It's a little frightening, but it's not too scary. It's an awesome one. Definitely check it out. Nice. And that was my buddy, uh, Keith, the retro cart collector from Canada. Thanks Keith. for the call. Um, he actually just put out a video uh, hunting with uh, the Pixel Game Squad on his channel. So, check so out the real question YouTube. is, Russ, how much did you pay each of those people to call us? <laughs> 
Did you set that up or was that or was that uh, organic? You'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't tell. Um, the Frighteners. Yeah. Michael J. Fox was in that and it has some really good special effects. The I could bring up the uh, the movie poster was so he basically plays a character where he can see the dead and talk to them. And he's running a business where he has these ghosts that are kind of friendly and he'll have them go like, I think haunt a house and he'll go in and kind of like evict them out to get paid or whatever. But then he's, he gets in trouble with some like actual like demon ghost or whatever. But the poster here, it's like, I'm trying again, to remember if I've ever seen this. I don't, it doesn't sound familiar, but maybe it's like that. You know, if you have a piece of fabric and then you push your face oh, through yeah, it, that's terrifying. That's kind of the poster. And I think Freddie even did that in one of the. Uh, like when someone was going to bed and they were coming above the the wallpaper or something like that. But this came out in 1996. Oh, wow. After a tragic car accident that kills his wife, a man discovers he can communicate with the dead. And he uses his gift to con people. However, when a demonic spirit appears, he may be the only one who can stop it from killing the living and the dead. Weird. So it's got some comedic parts in it. And what's also funny about this, too, I seen a um, bunch of stuff come up online because he was. I think they, it was close to him filming one of the Back to the Futures. Uh huh. And there's scenes with him yelling like, Doc, like, and he's like, wait, no, I'm on the wrong set. <laughs> and people had used that and cut up footage to be like back to the future Four. Oh, yeah. Like to make it like a new one. Yeah, that's very T2 right there. Oh, yeah. With the mirror, like the demons coming out of that. But yeah, really that's good special effects right there. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely check it out. The Frighteners. Yeah, that's a good one. I don't know if my wife's seen that. So I've definitely never it. seen this or even heard of it. And that yeah. looks like a Dementor. And uh, let's see. Oh, Peter Jackson uh, was a writer on this here. Huh. And uh, and director. Cool. So King Kong. There you go. Check it out. The Frighteners. And then we can jump over to see what people were posting on our social medias. What they remember their first horror movie or scary movie and whatnot. We got Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. What did you say? What did you say? Springfield, let's hear from you. All right, over on our Instagram page, Retroholic 16. First one I remember watching was the original It. Oh, yeah. I was right around seven, and it scared the crap out of me. I remember when that was like a big deal that it was coming on TV and I remember watching it both mm -hmm. nights and right. It's the only one. part that I didn't really like was there was a scene where a guy was in the bathroom and if yes. I'm not mistaken, there was some razor blades and his wrist were involved. And right. I, right. Yes. Yeah. I, that just creeps me out. So hardcore. Not a fan. Not a fan. Not a fan of that. Do not like seeing that. Don't even like thinking about it. I regret even bringing it up. <laughs> Definitely a creepy one for sure. It, the original. Yeah. What else we got? We got Samuel Maris, A Nightmare on Elm Street. And I have been a massive horror fan ever since. Yeah, that's another one I'm not a fan of. And I've already given my reasons why. So I won't go over them again. Mike's Retro Room. Chucky at the age of two. Whoa. I mean, that's a core memory there. That is. is just terrible. I fell asleep and my mother and sister stayed up at first to watch it. And then because they were scared. So good old Chucky. No, 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 <laughs> not at two, not at two years old. No, thanks. I'm your friend at the end. Mommy, my buddy's going to kill me. <laughs> Over on our Facebook page, we got Jennifer J. Love here. The one that stood out to me was Pet Cemetery. That gave me nightmares for days, and I had to sleep with my parents. Talk about traumatizing. Yeah, that's a good one. Aaron, first horror movie I remember watching was The Shining. 
I'm so glad this is getting brought up. When I was four in 1985, didn't really understand much of it, but Naked Grandma scared the crap out of me. Oh, that's terrifying. I definitely shouldn't have been watching it at that age. Never did get over my fear of old ladies. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, The Shining is a really good one. Um, Like, I really enjoyed that even at a young age. And I really thought it was awesome when the Simpsons spoofed it. Yes. All work and no play makes Homer something, something. Go crazy. Don't mind if I do. (laughs) So so great. Classic one. Yeah, I dig it. That was a good one. Uh, Zach chimes in with Ernest Scared Stupid. All I remember from that movie was the one line. Something where he says, how about a, bu- a bumper sandwich, booger lips? <laughs> and he hits that troll thing in the face with the car. Nice. And then Austin Mills says, uh, Resident Evil. I watched my stepdad play through the first four games on different consoles. Maybe he thought we were talking about video games. Oh, let's see what else he has to say. Because so, he might get to the movie. Um, different consoles over the years. Oh, okay. When the movie came out, we obviously had to go see it in theaters. I was in second grade at the time, so maybe not the best idea on his part. But growing up with those experiences is why I still love all things zombies. Yes. Yeah, I'd say with the first Resident Evil they movie, they tried their best to kind of capture a little bit of that horror, I will say. More horror than the the movies that went after that went mm-hmm. more for the action yeah. um, than horror, I will say. You know, they were going down into the hive. They did have like the the mansion kind of started out in. So it had a little bit of stuffs from the game, but and some of the kills are pretty pretty gnarly in that. I could see that. There's the laser I, room. I'm almost certain that I saw that in theaters, but I don't remember anything about it. Except was it a little artsy when some of the cuts and the scenes. I don't know. I can't remember. Maybe it's got the um it's got the British girl who's like the the red lady and she's like talking, you're all going to die down here. Like like the AI. Yeah, I don't remember over. any of it. All right. That's a very good one. Wiped it from my brain. And then let's jump over to our YouTube page. We've got a YouTube community page. What were people saying? Mike, mostly Hitchcock movies, but John Carpenter's The Thing is another one I still love. Highly recommend it if you like sci-fi horror. I feel like I've seen the thing. It's got um uh what's his name in there? Uh I want to say Russell Crowe, but I don't know if that's right. <laughs> Does he turn into like almost like a swamp thing type of monster? No. Um who's in this here? I could bring it up here. This is 1982. Hold on. Let me get rid of this. We'll bring this up. I got to see this monster. So I can. So the, well, the monster replic it like replicates you like it lands and then you don't know who's the thing because it can oh. be, it'd be oh. you know, Kurt Russell. That's who I was thinking of. The, 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 the for some reason that that image of on the cover there reminds me of the big daddy for some reason. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, here's like some scenes of, oh, of, the, of the monster. And it was like a spider, spider person, upside down head thing. Like, that's where you kind of see it mm-hmm. running around. Yeah. Terrifying. In the background there. But so they're weird. basically, they're in like Antarctica. And then this thing comes in and infiltrates the base. Yeah, and then, and then you don't know who's the a like. Is this guy the alien, or or, I, or is this? Or I feel I, like I saw this as a kid. It sounds vaguely familiar. And they did do a sequel, like I don't know, ten years ago or something like that. So the thing. All right, back to YouTube. Here we got almost nothing. Comments the birds. So there we go. mentioned it. It's comical now, but as a six-year-old, it scared the crap out of me. Yeah. Eric Plunk. I had zero desires to watch horror movies as a child. Me and you, Eric. Are you afraid of the dark? 
I Nick was as hardcore as I dared to go. However, one day I was at my aunt's, where my older cousin was watching A Nightmare in Elm Street 2. I remember the scene on the school bus where they ended up driving into hell oh, and God. was scared out of my mind. I didn't want to watch any more after that. I don't blame you, Eric. <laughs> All right, we got a few more here. We got T. Sedini. I'm a massive horror hound. I don't specifically remember the first horror movie I ever saw, but I do remember seeing Hellraiser 2 Ugh. when I was in the fourth grade. Terrible. That was definitely a pivotal moment in my life. Since then, I've been chasing the dragon of horror to feel that scared again. I don't know that I would ever want to see something with Pinhead in it. He looked so terrifying. Yeah, my dad definitely rented those. And I had gone back and watched them and still kind of confused on, on the story of the whole lore of everything. Like with yeah. the box and this and that. Certainly iconic uh, horror villain with the pins all in his face. You know, great makeup and, and yeah. everything for sure. And lastly, we got a River City Ransom, Stephen King's It. I was a child, and it was extra scary because he killed children. Yep. I was scared of the shower drain for years. And we my all float down here. My brother would sometimes grab the VHS box off the shelf in Blockbuster and taunt me with it. To this day, I'm still haunted by Tim Curry's face. <laughs> what about when he smiles in Home Alone 2 and looks like the Grinch? That's true. That's true. Steven, who, I, I never, I, for the longest time, I didn't know that was Tim Curry that played Pennywise. Yeah. When yeah, I finally so, figured it out, I was like, oh, it makes so much sense. Definitely a lot of iconic roles on his end. But yeah, yeah I remember watching it at my friend Sal's house and seeing the VHS. It was a double yeah. VHS thick boy. Because like you said, you watched it on on TV and they yeah. split it up between they, two, two nights. Yep. When it came out, I watched it on television. This, the, whatever that big event was. And I think I caught it by accident, but it was like so intriguing that it like sucked me in. I, I don't know if I was planning to watch it or I would love to know when it originally aired on TV. Can we Google that real fast? Oh yeah. Yeah. My I mean, brain tells me 92, but maybe it was 91 or 90. Uh, let's see. Because I feel like it. I would have had to have been a little bit older to like be brave enough to watch it. Um, I'll do a original. Because it was like on NBC remake. or ABC or CBS. I'm pretty sure. Probably NBC. If I had to guess. So 1990. Okay, so it was 90. I was wrong. So TV, and it's labeled as a TV mini miniseries. So. Yeah. So, so when did it, what, what did it, does it say what channel showed it? Um, let's see, maybe on the IMDB page or sorry, on the Wikipedia. Let's see here. Um, ABC, right ABC. there. 1990 ABC, what? two part psychological horror. Does it say the exact date it came out? Yeah. Let's scroll down here. I'm just curious. When was Jay watching this? Released November 18th to the 20th. Okay, so so the eight, November eighteenth to twentieth of nineteen ninety, a young Jay. Let's see, let's see what day that was. I'm so I'm, I don't know. This is probably only matters to me, but and it's after Halloween, so they maybe they couldn't get a time slot in for the October month. Let's see, nineteen ninety. You got to scroll way back on the old iPhone. We're in ninety five, <laughs> ninety three, ninety two, ninety one. Hang on, we're getting close. All right, here, hang on, here we go. We are. November 18th and 19th, you said. Or 18th to 20th. Yeah. So that was a Sunday through a Tuesday. So odd. And it was leading up to the 22nd, which would have been Thanksgiving. So it was Thanksgiving week. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so maybe I was out of school and had extra time to see it or something. I don't know. But yeah. um, I was I, on those days. At that time, I was watching that movie, and I know exactly the room I was in. It says, uh, and it was filmed over a period of three months in New Westminster, British Columbia. Okay, so Canada, nineteen ninety, with a budget of twelve million, double the usual television budget. 
The mini series was first broadcast during the November sweeps months. Despite the risk factors, mixed pre-airing critical reviews and coverage of President George H.W. Bush's foreign trips cutting into the program. It was ABC's biggest success of 1990. The miniseries pulled through with a total of 30 million viewers for its two parts. Your boy was one of them. Yeah, certainly a classic one. If you only ever seen the remake, you know, I do suggest to go back and watch this original one as well. Not quite as uh, gory as Mm -hmm. the newer one, one, since the special effects are way over, but maybe more psychologically scaring you. Still pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, we definitely touched on a lot of the uh, horror franchises for sure. That stuck out in my head. Quick, like, roll down. We don't have to spend a lot of time chatting them, but because I had brought up Ghoulies, you mentioned Gremlins. Uh, we didn't say anything about there was Puppet Master. Yeah. Was another, like, small, yeah, small guys, scary guys running around. Um, the Gate was another one I remember. Again, it's like the same concept with a family, and they open up some portal to hell, and some these little, like, monsters come out of it. Creepy. And, um, what other ones like that stood out to me? I want to make a mention of two while you're thinking of it. Um, okay. I remember watching the blob. I think okay. it came on TV, maybe like on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, it was like this pink substance and it kind of like melted people away. I don't really remember a whole lot about it, but I remember watching it and I remember like actually enjoying it. Um, and another one is the fly with, uh, the guy from Jurassic park. What's his name? Malcolm. Ian Malcolm, what was his name in real life? Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> like Malcolm. Jeff Goldblum, yeah. yeah. The, fly, the Fly, for sure. Really cool movie. If you've never seen The Fly. Pretty good grotesque. special effects, yeah. Sci-fi-ish. Really? Yep. Definitely a good one. You, you mentioning uh, The Blob kind of made me think of this one on kind of the same spectrum as The Stuff. The Stuff, oh lord. I don't know if you've ever seen this one Never here. seen The Stuff. Basically, the stuff is like, um, like a Cool Whip, right? Oh, weird. It's like Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, and it got packaged, and people are buying it. But then, much like the Blob, like you know, it's consuming them, and it's getting bigger. So it's like this big Cool Whip consistent <laughs> Blob thing, but the called st- the stuff. The picture of the girl with the the weird. I- I'm not gonna say what I. Th- Oh. What I'm thinking. <laughs> she looks like you got a facial there. <laughs> Imagine the special effects are pretty interesting in here. Yeah. Um, the other thing I was going to mention was uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, not, yeah. Not a traditional scary movie or horror movie, but I remember watching it. And it kind of was like a musical meets horror. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting. I mean, real catchy uh, uh, tracks in there. I remember watching that with my mom. So I watched the 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 remake has Rick Moranis in it, and but there's one before that. that so didn't... the one I saw must have been the remake because I saw it with my cousin Tabitha and my cousin Stacy, and and it had um, Rick Roman. Uh, can't even say his last name. Romanis in it. That one, Moranis. Yeah, yeah, Rick Moranis. Um, yeah, that was the one. Um, there was one other ho- horror slash scary movie I was going to mention, but I can't remember what it is. I don't know. I don't know what slips it your mind. Yep, slip my slip my mind. Well, we did ask you guys what topics you want us to cover on our YouTube page. We got, and this was suggested here by Eric Blunt, was the first horror movie you remember seeing as a kid. So, thank you for that. Yeah, we kind of we kind of elaborated on just all movies we remembered seeing, but yeah, because I couldn't put a definitive answer to the I couldn't very either. First one. And I wouldn't, and if I did, it would have been Cat's Eye, and I would have just had the one two and a half minute segment to say <laughs> that I always have to say about it. <laughs> but we'll see what we, we you know we'll have what, I think three more episodes in the month of October. Um, River City Ransom says maybe most violent kill scenes in a video game. Okay, we do like a countdown on that. Steve V's Man Cave Arcade says McDonald Halloween toys, Halloween costumes growing up, top 10 scary video games. 
Um, we got Dragon Punch. Dave suggested, what are your top picks for scariest and spookiest games you ever played? So a lot of like similar to that. Yeah. And then Purge and Thrifting. My buddy Colby says, top 10 worst video games you ever played. Either games that you were hyped that you couldn't stand, didn't appeal to you, too hard, couldn't get into. So it'd be like games so bad they're scary. Could be the title. <laughs> I was so. just going to say, like, uh, classic Halloween memories, you know, like. Shopping for costumes, getting candy and stuff. Which is, yeah, like anything, like Halloween specials on TV. Did you go out and buy monster cereal? I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll think about it. Yeah. So some topics there to look forward to in the future. And again, if you want to get in on the participation you can follow us on any of the social medias, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and leave comments there or call into the show and leave a voice message. Better yet, do all three, including leaving us a kind review. There you go. That'd be a, that'd be a nice uh, treat. That'd be an trek. early <laughs> Christmas present to Russ and I. There we go. <laughs> we got... Quick shout out to our Patreons. We got Dan and Nicole Stretchers and Toll, Joe Sheevy, Trace Living Good, Samantha Chang, Rodney Torres, Retro Alex 16, and Austin Mills for supporting the show. Much appreciate you guys. Uh, shout out to our sponsor, Bull Airs. Check out their awesome stuff and custom shoes, bullairs.com. You can save 10% off your order if you use the code WARP10. WARP Pipe 10, sorry. <laughs> Get it right. One of those. <laughs> Sweet. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed jumping in the warp pipe with us. And we'll see you guys on the next level. <laughs> <laughs>